Hello and welcome back for another history of Overwatch. We have moved on through 2019 and we're going to the playoffs. So there wasn't a stage four finals. I forgot in my last video if I said that, I apologize. But there wasn't a stage playoffs in uh, stage four. There has never been a stage four playoff since the one that we won. So technically I'm the greatest stage four player of all times through association. So, you know, I got that going for me. But what we are going to watch is good players and good teams. Uh, we're going to watch the San Francisco Shock going up against the Atlanta Reign. And this was like an out of nowhere banger. And I want to do this because I want to talk about Atlanta Reign a little bit because where they are now is not really where they were back in 2019 when they first came into the season. They had a really interesting team and we'll talk about them. And they were going up against San Francisco Shock pretty easily favored to be the best to win it all. Um, we're going to talk about the bracket as we go through. We're not going to watch the grand finals. I, I will give you the precursor. The next match is not going to be the grand finals of this season. It just wasn't very interesting. Shock won. After, go after losing this match against the Atlanta Reign, they get really, 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 really angry. Especially Moth was super angry the whole time. And they went on a 4-0 run through the bottom, uh, through the lower bracket. And they actually didn't drop a map after this match is lost and they go on to win the whole series and they were just better than everyone else. And the grand finals, unfortunately, was not very interesting. Um, but we are going to watch the Shock versus Atlanta Reign. And then the next video is going to be the Vancouver Titans taking on the New York Excelsior because that was also a banger of a match. There's some historical memories to be had in that match. And it was also just very good. Um... So we're going to look at this uh, San Francisco Shock versus Atlanta Reign. Let's just talk about the season and the stage uh, a little bit before we move into the match, though. Uh, Play-ins kind of looking like the APAC region, but uh, unfortunately, London Spitfire actually beat Shanghai Dragons in a banger, I remember, and uh, progressed with Seoul Dynasty into the actual playoffs. It went pretty much as expected in this point. There was a couple of really good matches. Like, there weren't that many 4 rows, especially in the early. Like, Spark just missed out against the Gladiators, which was an interesting one. Vancouver Titans and made their run through the playoffs like everyone thought they would. New York Excelsior did quite well. Um, it, there wasn't any major upsets except for this match between the Shocker and the Atlanta Reign. Um, not really too much else to talk about for uh, each individual match, but we'll talk about the playoffs as a whole. Important to remember, in these playoffs in the 2019, we are no longer playing GOATS. GOATS 2-2-2 uh, two, 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 Roll Lock was introduced in Stage 4, and everyone is playing through that. So there was a massive shakeup in the middle of the season here that sort of like flipped a lot of teams on their heads of who was good and who wasn't. It wasn't too crazy of a flip on their head. The teams that were generally good in GOATS were also good in 2-2-2 two, because two, two, they, plot twist, have great players. Um, but let's get into it. Let's watch the Atlanta Reign. Um, I think at this point, DeFran is no longer on the Atlanta Reign. And no one was really expecting Atlanta to be this good. Um, let's get into the walkout. Let's get the Atlanta Oh, Mitch is so loud. So we got the Atlanta Reign coming out. Uh, so there's a couple of familiar faces to who they are now. Um, there's Baby Bay, your boy Baby Bay, Ursta coming in as well. Masa, Dogman is the back line. Uh, I guess the only remaining player is Gator. And funnily enough, worth noting, at this point, Gator was actually had barely played in the season. He was like a mid-season signing. I think he, you know, fun historical lore. I think he was picked up mid-season because he actually was serving a boosting ban, I believe, with Kaluj. Um, who is now just recently got signed to the uh, San Francisco Shock. So he wasn't available um, too much of this season, but he came in to replace Darko, who had a bit of a storied history of being quite negative. Um, but Gator came in at late, and this is around when Sigma was introduced into the game. And not many people had picked up Sigma, and Gator really sort of pioneered the way with Sigma as a main tank, because when a new hero comes in, it's anyone's game, right? So... Gator picked it up and actually really ran the Atlanta Reign through a lot of their playoffs and, uh, you know, had a, had a great run. So if you don't know who, like, Pockpo and Ursa, Pockpo was around for a little bit, bounced between a couple of teams. He was a solid main tank. Nothing to write home about. Ursta had a crazy season on Tracer. This was really... If you hear, ever hear people of, like, what happened to Ursta? Why did Ursta never play whenever he went to these teams? His Tracer was, like bonkers like striker level good during this phase of the game 
and his Reaper, like those two things really just sort of came together and he made his name. There are a lot of people who are thinking he was going to be MVP, including myself. I think I said Ursa might have been MVP going into the 2020 season. Um, but he was just incredible. I can't remember if he popped off super hard in this match. I don't remember this match 100%. The only thing is I remember the ending. No spoilers, but you'll probably remember the ending too if you don't know what I'm talking about. Then Dogman, uh, Dogman and Masai in the back line. So, classic team. This is really when Atlanta Rain was considered the most at their gatekeeper phase, right? You, if you've ever heard people be like, oh, Atlanta Rain are the gatekeepers. Atlanta Rain was pretty solidly middle of the pack throughout the entirety of the season. They had the opportunity to beat some top tier teams, but they also lost to random low tier teams. But they were pretty firmly in the middle throughout the entire 2019 scene and the, uh, season and the 2020 season, which is what made this match such an interesting, um, you know, surprise to a lot of people when they ended up taking the shock to seven. Ah, oh, the baby bass swag. With All the shock right. and with the rain, respectively. And you can see Hip here pretty solid uh, with the rain. That's All right, uh, let's skip through. As much as I love talking about but your baby, baby. Uh, let's look at San Francisco Shock. We've watched these guys so much in the history of Overwatch. I know you guys are probably sick of what, looking at the Shock at this point, but they were the best team in 2019. They need to be storied. They were so impressive. Uh, and it's really interesting to see them in 2 2 2 and not in. Goats, because Super doesn't really play that much in these playoffs, if I remember correctly. I don't think this is... Does Super come in in the Roadhog in this playoffs at all? I'm trying to remember if Super came in in these playoffs after Goats, because Reinhardt really wasn't played that much. Was that 2020 when Super Roadhog came in? It's all become a blur to me. Only in 2020. So yeah, this is mainly the team, and you really saw the, uh, the diversity of the San Francisco Shock team. Um, let's jump it forward. So those are the teams. And let's get into it. Play like one map with Nevix? Okay. Alright, so this was... This was the meta for the playoffs. And I actually forgot about this because in the show match, uh, the show San Francisco Shock did recently, they played this comp and I'm like, why are they playing this comp? And that's like, oh, it's the 2019 comp. I know. <laughs> It, it wasn't very exciting. You're just looking at it. It plays exactly how you think it's going to play out. They just run at each other. But hey, we'll get into it and we'll appreciate it for what it was. Uh, so the double shield, it's like a double shield brawl almost in which nobody ever dies. Um, and it's like kind of hoping your Doomfist can get a lot of value. The Reapers, I think, what do you think the most important character was in this meta? I think it was probably the Reaper. The Reapers are really the big amount of damage that you have going for you. And pretty brutal play. You're going to watch the Grand Finals tonight. Legit worse than Goats, yeah. There was a lot of intricacies, intricacies to Goats that are really lost when you play these when you play these sets of heroes because Doomfist and Reaper are very hard to break down the the nice things about it because it's very niche and hard to see the value that you're getting from those characters like obviously the big combos is very heavily the the Arisa pull into the doomfist punches Arisa pull into you know pretty much any of the abilities that you can think of in this it flux doom all oh god i forgot how much this hurt my eyes Somehow the shock won. That was a lot of ults though. Wasn't Hook pull meta during stage 4 while Sigma was unavailable? I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember exactly stage 4. Was Bull out at this point? Uh, yeah, Bull is out at this point. Wait, is Bull out at this point? Yes, yeah, yeah. No, Bull is 100% out at this point because some people played Wrecking Ball Goats. Chung Du tried to play Wrecking Ball Goats. I think he came at the end of 2018. Cole Bongo. Dude, I forgot how chaotic this was. 
People just never die. Sam Klaus, thank you for Prime Gaming Sub. There's a lot of ults by Atlanta. This isn't Neo Gets. No, no, Neo Goats is way later. I think Neo Goats was toined, uh, coined in this season. Um, this is just like a really... Because this comp is only ever played for the playoffs. I don't think anyone ever played this composition again. I thought Ursta played the Reaper. Oh, is that in a different season? Or is that earlier in the season? Interesting. What was the nerf that Doom receives after this? I don't think Doom has been heavily nerfed in a long time. I don't think... Did Doom get nerfed for this? I thought Sigma got nerfed. Why play double shield with Rush? So it, it's it's not really as much Rush. And I think... these are the, This is, in my opinion, the distinction between Rush and Brawl. Rush, in my opinion, is a situation which you, you just want to get on top of them and then you can kill them all, but you don't have that much sustainability. This is, in my opinion, Brawl, where it's like you want to get on top of them, but your job is really to just sustain. Like, you're just literally getting in there and you're just fighting tooth and nail. And there's not really rhyme or reason. People aren't running or trying to rush at the opposition. It really is just bashing your heads against each other. Oh, yeah. Rissa Hold had a larger radius. 35 HP shields to 30 shields. I can't, yeah, I can't remember exactly why this got broken and that kind of stuff, but... Brawl nowadays has like rhyme back comp. Yeah, they, people, you can really mix the term. The terminology of Rush and Brawl are very loose. Like you could say Rush or Brawl and they essentially mean the same thing. But that's how I define the difference between the two. Uh, is, did someone ask why, why Cassidy wouldn't work in his comp? Cassidy dies too much. The thing that makes Doofus and Reaper so good is that they're very self-sustainable within these comps. If you played a Cassidy, he would be easily the most exploitable target, right? Think about how fast you guys run at each other with these comps and how much health everyone has. Everyone is very hard to kill, and that's important. If you provided a target that was easier to kill, they wouldn't. You, it wouldn't be played. I probably only had 200 HP as well. Actually, I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Damn, Atlanta Rain gets control and just never lose it. Would May work with this? May would actually be okay in this. I think you could easily justify playing some May. I wonder if there, some people thought they just didn't have enough damage. Because May is great at CCing, but you don't have much damage, right? Double shield composition, just two Wouldn't Brig be, be better here instead of Lucio? No, you need the speed boost. If you don't have the speed boost, your team just gets caught incredibly flat-footed. You can't chase anyone. You can't close the distance. You can't do anything. And you can't play the Brig because you need the Moira for healing. Sombra doesn't get value fast enough. Like, obviously, the EMPs would be enormous, but you wouldn't apply... You Like, think about how much healing and how much sustainability exists in this comp. Sombra just doesn't do enough damage in the neutral. Maybe May is too static. Yeah, but you could potentially crush them against a wall. I'm sure there's some way in which you could make May work, but as I said, I think a lot of teams came to the conclusion that this was the best composition. I think some people tried to play the Zarya in these compositions. Like a Ryan... I can't remember exactly when the Zarya came out, but there obviously was Zarya played in this, in this playoffs. God, I forgot how bad this was to watch. <laughs> Why do Bap over Moira? I think Baptiste dies too much. I, if I was guessing of why Baptiste wasn't played, I think you pro people probably struggled with Doomfist Reaper. I think it would be very hard to keep a Baptiste alive compared to a Moira. Oh, wow. 
this time the rain retake much quicker. Yeah, call it. Right. I think, remember, at this point, Baptiste doesn't have an IMAX window yet. It's only still the small window, so it was very hard to get value out of the window. So I think the, the call essence is just better. The emote? Oh, the classic. Good flux. He's got to be careful about getting... I don't know what just happened. But they're dead. Well, that's a late beat from Masa. And it gets it though. Oh, it does it. Oh. Oh. Forgot how much how, how much shield uh, six health had. Yeah, they they had the, they made the same mistake with Brig of thinking it's like. Like, they don't put enough value on having a non-static shield, right? And being able to put it up and down. Like, people are like, oh, that's how Reinhardt... But, like, Reinhardt can't do anything if he doesn't hold his shield. So, oh, nice boot. Um, ooh. But, yeah, Six Shield is, like, 1,500 here. Now it's what... How much? How big is Six Shield now? 600? 800? I want to say 600. 700? Oh, okay. S split the middle. 900? Oh, okay, I don't even know anymore. Why no Ryan instead of Arissa? Um, I would assume it's because of the Arissa pool. Like, Arissa pool synergizes so well with all of these things. I think people preferred the Arissa. I don't know if Ryan was... It. Like, this is before the Ryan damage buff. Yeah, maybe they just... The, they think the pull was way better. Yeah, like, pull with every ability that exists here is very, very strong. It could easily be that those characters are better for the meta, but what... The way Overwatch works, when especially when you're scrimming, is if you're losing... The best thing you can really do to see... To improve... And because of how fast there was for turnaround for matches, it was generally easier to just hit the mirror. Just play the mirror and be like, don't try and reinvent the wheel of maybe Reinhardt is better. Some people do. And that kind of stuff. And maybe that's all being tested. I'm sure people tried playing Reinhardt here, right? Reinhardt's sick. I'm sure people try, like, you know, they, the shock has super. I'm sure if they could play Reinhardt, they, they would play Reinhardt, sorry. I think maybe Fortify is just too good on the Orisa. Yeah, like, I think without the... I, Ryan could potentially just get run over by the Reaper and the Doom. Because Reinhardt, at this point, I don't believe has Steadfast. Maybe that's a big thing as well. So he just gets pushed around. Fort didn't have no crit at this point. I'm not 100% sure. The patches have been very convoluted and it's like hard to remember exactly the times in which things were implemented. Oh, good. Oh, oh my God. Pokpo just killed their team. Did you see that? He got pushed away by Masa and then Pokpo pulled him back in. <laughs> Zip chair gaming. Your team, your chair. Uh, funny, funny fact about zip chair. In 2019, they got the zip chair sponsor and they changed all the zip chairs. So think about this. So I, I, I have no real problem with zip chairs. They're just kind of like another DX racer, right? I don't even know if they're still around. But um, they went from Herman Miller chairs on the stage to zip chairs and tons of the players complained because think about it. It's a Herman Miller's like these perfect Herman Miller chairs. And then they made everyone sit on these like DX races almost. Right. And a lot of people, people found out the way to get around it was that if you could get a doctor's note 
proving that you needed the back support of a Herman Miller, you could play on a Herman Miller. And I think a bunch of players did until there might have been enough complaints that they moved away from it, or maybe people just dealt with it. It's a crazy downgrade, yeah. And people were really, yeah, it was, it was, it was one of those deals that go through in history where you're like, I understand that you're trying to sell sponsors Overwatch League, but don't fuck with the players. Don't mess with what the players are doing because of this random as sponsor that you got. <laughs> I want to get a Herman Miller chair soon. I uh, hopefully find a good second-hand one, but I'm still sitting with old, old trustful, trustworthy uh, IKEA. Doomfist. It's so hard to see where the value is being won and lost. Outside of like a Reaper just punching someone, right? No worries, Ed Top. Share my back seat for 8 hours a day. Yeah, I've never had back issues on this chair, so I'm chilling. I just like how spacious is. Top down metas, yeah, yeah. Top down is like definitely the best way to like watch it because it's all about like how the teams are pulling and how they're using their cooldowns. It's just very hard to see in the chaos. Like with this, like with this view, it's very hard to see what's really going on. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Shock is so low. Oh, there, that's the prime example, right, of a pull into a into a doom pistol and the value that Arissa provides because because the Arissa pull at this point had the radius of you know the entire Earth. It just, it, with these compositions, it could pull so many people in uh, so easily. Mobisai, yeah, a lot of a lot of goats and this era were very like. This is why a lot of people stopped playing Overwatch. Is it? It really isn't an FPS game at this point. It's a strategy game, like a MOBA, right? It's all about cooldown usage, positioning, and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the FPS, like, how many people in this in this game are really aiming, like? Think about it. How many people actually have significant levels of aiming? Like, not like, obviously, like, Lucio, Sig, and Arissa. Like, you have to aim, but it's not the most important part of the character, right? It's important to be able to aim effectively, but that's not really the big thing. Moira doesn't aim. You just have to point in their general direction. Doomfist has some aim with the shotgun, but is mainly ability focused. And then Reaper has like close range shotguns. Like no one really has to have precision aiming in this thing. And that's why a lot of people really don't like this where Overwatch went. Aim isn't clutching in this meta. Yeah, like. Finally get a break. They're able to break here. They're going to be able to flip the point. I don't think they have any cups of tea right now. Risk of pull you through walls. Yeah. Hold this though from. 99 to 0. Can they take it all the way back? No ultimates right now here for the Atlanta Arena to work with. Same for the Shock. You're going to have the Meteor Strike probably come online for Sinatra a little bit earlier. For me, this is going to come down to the next time we see these support ults come around. The next time we see the Coalescence and the Sound Barrier come off. If the Shock can get good uses of those... And we're oh, oh, no. oh he gets my God. <laughs> Overwatch, baby! Look at this, Sinatra. <laughs> yep, yep. Way yo, up, yep, do. Sweet, cool. He went way too early. I think uh, Sinatra went way too early, but it's still so funny. Oh my God! Look at that value right there. Oh, striker strafe the wrong way. Dude, Ursa is pounding on this Doomfist. When was the Ursa Tracer, like, pop up? Like, when did that happen? Was it in stage four? Was that when Ursa's Tracer really, like, people sat up and took notice? Season three? I thought he was benched for most of season three. Like that, because I remember everyone being super hype on Ursa and he didn't play it in season three. I think it must have been stage four. Cousins talk shit about players and then immediately pop. Who did I talk shit about? Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy did not pop off. 
because I mean they don't the flatter soldier <laughs> that's what I made fun of soldier and then soldier ended up being pretty solid sure Bastion on defense here for the Atlanta Reign so they'll go Bastion plus May on defense uh, sometimes you see I remember seeing him playing Genji. Yeah, I don't remember season three. Because I remember being super hyped for his tracing. Then we never really saw it. Alright, what do we got? Bastion from Atlanta, baby. Bap Anna. Interesting. So they're trying to play a different kind of comp on defense. I don't hate it. It's kind of a defensive setup. Oh my god, that nade was incredible by Dougman. They had Edison play Tracer in season three, yeah. Wobble, wobble, Pilk lover, thank you very much for the two. Pilk. Also know that they got one. They know they got the Moira. They can sneak Violet back in here with a fate. There is potential for him to be caught out. And looks like they're baiting this as well. Okay. Yeah. He got Dogman down, yeah. That was a good play by Sinatra. That was a really smart setup. The Doomfist just sort of uh, going a different way than we expect to that high ground, but the Arna was maybe a little bit too aggressively positioned. Something you, you've not uh, set a Dogman only once. I feel like the problem yeah, with this Atlanta comp is they're going to have to switch now, and they're going to lose three ults? Four ults? Yeah, four ults. That's a four-player switch. Unless Ursa stays for the... I, you'd probably stay for the tra uh, for the Blizzard, right? Blizzard works. May works in this composition. You don't need a Doomfist. Bap and Ana. Well, the idea was that the Bap and Ana would just sit on the high ground and then just spam down at the Shock because it's almost impossible with the composition the Shock wanted to play to get onto that high ground. Um, but then, obviously, Sinatra made that great play where he pushed Dogman onto the floor and then Dogman just dies for that. Yeah, they, they just like... And this is the classic problem with with how with how valuable ults are that if you like don't play the right comp at the first in the first fight, then you just lose the second fight because you don't have ultimates. Thought Super was there a risk player? Not in uh, not in this matter. I think only in season three onwards was did Super become the Arisa player. Is it gonna be hard to get value with Blizzard? And that that becomes one of the things of like, how do you get value with Blizzard? I guess you can just throw it on the card here, but Shock can easily just disengage, right? Oh, Pogpo just evaporated. Okay, they get Striker though. No, wait, what? <laughs> Oh shit! Shocker on a roll here. Is that going to switch to back to the Doomfist? He probably will, right? Yeah, it did. Sinatra's Doomfist in in the playoffs was actually disgusting. I think he was probably the best Doomfist in the in the playoffs. He just understood his rotations the best. Oh wow, aggressive. Look at that push forward there. The rest of the rain want to go as well. Death Blossom comes out to try and deter that attempt. Man, Kinetic Grass got a heck of a lot of shield there for Gator, but it is burning away awfully fast. Supercharger helps. And oh, Baby Bay. There we go. Hoxhell was also very good. Yeah, yeah. There, there was like a couple of really good dooms. Just kind of go all in on that fight. If you lose that fight, they're going to set a tremendous time. Uh, at this point, though, you needed to try and just get something off the clock. Hoxhell on, like, Doom Genji is just, like... It's just it's just so good to watch. Sigma's Barrier had a small cast time of 0.2 seconds, but no cool CD on Rogue Hall, yeah. Well, like, it, it, the shield was also enormous, right? Like, that's why Sig was so good. You could literally just send and redeploy, like, your Sigma shield, and it had so much health. Oh, what? If that was him, that would have been the end of the coalescence as he got put up against the wall, but he survives and then he takes Smurf down. Oh my god. Dude, Pogpo is just catching these Sinatra punches. Incremental progress around this corner. Did this shift give the same amount of shield? I can't remember exactly how much shields you got from the. Oh, good boot by Moth. I mean, Kennedy Grass 
That was such an important. That was such a good boot by Moth. Adjust a little game rules to make the switching less punishing with people. Yeah, I, I think in in the early days of Overwatch, a lot of people used to switch a lot more. Like it'd be really cool if it was a, you were able to switch. Like think about how fun Overwatch would be. If it, it wasn't as punishing to switch characters from point to point, right? And like on each map. The problem with it, like, ultimates really de-incentivize you to ever switch characters, right? So that's why, in general, people always play... Um, generally find a composition that works on all points on all maps, because then you just never need to switch. Yes. That is, that, that, that's people propose 50% refund it, you can't really do that because then people would just charge up their ultimate with a certain hero and then switch to a hero with a much more important ultimate right like how would that work with like tracer for example right you charge up a pulse bomb really fast and then i switch to genji right and then i all of a sudden i have 50% of a blade So here's the Anabat from the Shock on defense as well, the Bastion, dude. They, they, you know one team played this in scrims and then everyone just adopted it. Someone played Bastion in scrims and then they're like, well, we don't know how to beat it. Let's just play Bastion ourselves. Just to kind of add to how big of a match this is. That's two months. That's a long time in the Overwatch League. I get a half on a striker here. Dude, the, uh, look how much health that lamp had. Oh, wow, nice little peek. Yeah, Shock won a championship with Bastion. Yeah, that's true. I think with how good Sigma was, people started to realize how strong Bastion was because the Sigma can just move with the Bastion, right? A biotic grenade, and they're not able to capitalize it on it. Alive. It's moth. Hey, bro. Mortality field keeps them up. You needed everybody to collapse on that, I think, a little bit faster. Isn't that crazy? Like, 90% of your execution is great. Like, you hit no. the best with all the disciples, and still just the last ability. 10% you miss. <laughs> At least you don't kill them quickly oh, no. enough. Now I'm excited. We get to see. Oh, this is grand finals, yeah. I'm trying to get back into it, but the boss is not 1500 right. shield, yeah. Sigma was, was pretty dumb. dumb broken. There it is. Gator. Oh my god. I hope Architect does well this year if he plays. The sad reality that I have is I I really hope Architect doesn't play for the for the hope of the spark. They have so many good players in Pineapple Shy and RP that Unless Architect has just somehow pulled a bunch of talent out and he sort of like places the level that he used to, I, I'd be surprised. He is just a walking ham. If he is hacked, nothing he can do. Striker takes a lot of damage, tried to get into the back line, but had to recall. EMP hit Smurf and Troy Hoban. And that's pretty darn good. Smurf's able to hide inside. The immortality field right. to give control of the point to Atlanta for the time being. A recontest is possible, but Smurf looks very much on his own there. Striker has to come in from the far side, but that healing is so good. And oh. Gain is down. Sinatra is oh. on the scene. Supercharger thrown down. Ursa just gets knocked into <laughs> no next way. Tuesday. And baby, Damn. Baby, they're just actually going to hold that. So Smurf actually backs up into the corner where... I'm sure a lot of the players at home, you see like the Orisa set up in that back corner gets both supports behind. Attention, Violet Spot on Ana. Yeah, this was like I think this see this like stage four and st and the playoffs are the only time we ever really saw Violet Ana. Because from here on, like the next time we see the shock play Ana was in season three when they decided to put Architect on the Ana instead of Violet. Which confused a lot of people. And apparently, like, the rumors are that Arc Violet doesn't like playing Anna, but his Anna is good, so I I don't know. It's such a weird thing. Like, we, I think it was Johnny who looked up the stats when we were talking about it, and it's like, oh, wow, I was lucky that caught someone. Um, it's surprising how little Anna he plays.
Nah, no, you do not need healing. Don't spam that. I'm getting flashbacks from solo queue. China, go. How do you? How do you? Uh, yes. Yeah, so oh no. <laughs> Numbani, baby. Oh wow. That was a great body block by Choi. Pogpo is gonna be very difficult for him to get in touch. He gets taken out. Masa just throwing his body at the point here. It's a tremendous defense from the shock. Aye. Right. That was a dominant map by the shock. And take map number two. Right, if you get the Dude, isn't it crazy these matches used to last three hours? I can't believe people paid attention for three hours. Look at there's like look at how much break there is between maps. 42 minutes to There was a There's like a 13 minutes between maps. To be fair, it is playoffs. That's true. Vast coach you have? Yeah. Tennis isn't better? Yeah. I think it's like a traditional sports thing that a lot of esports do. But like a lot of esports, like Overwatch League included, have realized that you real like you need to just pump the games out. You can't have too many breaks, otherwise you crush viewership. And that's why we got rid of half times in the middle of matches. And it honestly feels way better to watch the games without half times. Because it feels like you're watching a streamlined match rather than having these massive breaks where you just lose 30% of your audience. Horizon, let's go, baby. Oh, us to press the dash too early. Oh god. This is so awful. This is, these are the kind of setups in which Horizon was bad. Like defeating these Bastion sets up. Look, look at this. Look, look at look at this setup. He has an Orisa shield in front of him and a Sigma shield behind him. There is literally no way to shoot Striker. He is just in a bubble of shield, which both combined have like 900 health. And then they're just pulling people every, like, anytime someone's hiding, they just pull someone and they shoot at him. Worse than enjoying getting peed on? Yeah, that'd be super weird to get peed on. School just finished his stress so I can finally catch one. Hell yeah. This is pretty good for the rain. They get past and they're taking a lot of damage. Gator will be the first up. Okay, they made it into the stairs. The first step. Now they got to get out of the stairs. Oh, Dogman got Sinatra. But they have a Sombra? They're playing Genji Sombra, I just realized. It's one way to break it. Dude, Striker is just still existing. Oh, my star. This could be dangerous still for the rain. Oh, wow. Oh, Pogpo. It's, it's over. It's not coming home. Oh, no, dude. This is... Ah, uh, this is awful. I uh, This is the PTSD coming back. It really is. Like, uh, it, people, uh, people act as if, like, Horizon was a good map, and then they forgot that this shit happened. Then he takes out the immortality field that Moth has down at the high ground. Then he's able to hit two players with a biotic grenade, but still not enough. Okay. Oh, baby, babe. Right, so is that shield being thrown out by Twitch over? Well, let's see what they follow it up with. Okay, the amplification matrix doesn't actually go with the Bastion this time around. It's more for Moth and Twitch. I mean, he doesn't have the range for the hypersphere. That's an interesting There you go. I'll be honest with you. Just EMP the Bastion. Problem solved, forehead. Let's hope they don't have other ultimates. Oh my god. I like... This is like everything that I hate about Overwatch in one whole place. It is Doomfist, a Bastion, and Double Shield all combining to ruin my Overwatch experience. All right, they got a lot of ulters now. They got the blade. Hey, boy. I know. Hey, okay. Yeah, what's up? Hey, okay. What? You're going to dominate a lot of those points. Doomfist is a very snowball hero. He's still famine, though, right? Yes, yes. If your Doomfist is getting owned, if you're not really getting much value out of it, that's when you see teams really struggle trying to play behind it. Maybe they able to avoid the accretious Troy Gobin backs up. Dude, they have not really gotten much value. Oh, they got Sinatra now. The rain, they're trying to get past. 
Smurf's dead? Wait, Smurf's alive? How? Okay, never mind. Alright, there you go. They still have the blade. Us is gonna blade eventually. I swear, guys. I promise. I believe in Asta. Buddy, don't don't make me kick you out of the room. I'll do it. Dude, Urs is just like the fear of the blade is better than the blade itself. He's never gonna use it. Oh wow, he almost one shot. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. And that's pretty much how every blade goes ever. And people are like, why don't more people play Genji? That's why. But they lost Popo. He's sleeping right now. Hit the body grenade as was Massa. Popo's in trouble. Oh, he can't get away. And that should be the shock stabilizing here. If Ilo doesn't hit him with a biotic grenade, though, and uh, the sleep dart, what happens there? Play without Nana is so hard to use, especially in this, like, look at, we, we talk about how survivable everybody is in this comp, right? Like, who do you even blade at in this situation, right? Obviously, with the Anabap, you go for the back line, but if they were playing Lucio Mori, like, who do you go for? <laughs> the Lucio can potentially just boop you and run away, and then everyone else has like a fade or a run ability or are just impossible to kill. Oh wow, good play. Here it is, Nata's gonna get Nana boosted though. This extra durability can go oh. a long way, especially with the extra damage. Poke Poke! Again! God! My eyes! Here now with a minute and four left in the round. Zoomfist is, uh, Zoomfist is too easy to kill. Let's give him damage. We are thinking of watching the Toilet Bowl, where I think is that was really like the beginning of the Toilet Bowl, the Boston vs. Houston game in 2020. We'll probably watch it for the memes. Was it like an eight map banger? I think it's on the list. Able to survive through a ton. So, Atlanta, 43 seconds left. They make no progress, no tick here on point B. Maybe they teleport here. What is he trying to do? It was seven maps? I thought it. Oh, no. That's right. It was seven maps, but it wasn't a playoff series. <laughs> so, it was a best of five that was seven maps. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, Sinatra is just ruining their day with these meteor strikes. Probably hurling insults as he does back up, but it's still not going to escape. They're gonna stagger out Gator here as well. As Gator's trying to get out with his he life, back not gonna be able to do so. That's really bad for the rain, but that was really their best shot anyway. Poco sleeping. Is the one before they went online? Uh yeah, it was definitely in land events because I remember being in the studio watching it and us all just yelling at our monitors. He's not even trying. It will be the wrecking ball to step up here for Gator. Immediately fighting grenade drops down there. Poco gets to the point at least. Dogman hiding behind the supercharge when Sinatra goes in. Sinatra is absolutely out of control of this map so far. He's not yeah. so good on this second defense. It's so oppressive. Eh? It's just that's the problem with the like horizon and that kind of stuff. It's just so oppressive. The defensive team just has such an enormous advantage on both points that it's almost impossible to set up a strategy to attack. Especially with like the stuff that they have. Let's see how Atlanta decides to hold this. Oh, so not there's literally no reason to go for that, right? Like I thought that wall was just long enough. That may wall actually prevents Violet from rejoining his team during fade. He has to now wait for another fade pull down. They they're about to get pulled again. Where are they gonna pull left or right? Oh God. Now they're outside. Holy fuck. Because you move so slow here, now what? 
you can reposition, but this is also not bad for the shock. It's a, it's a worse angle for Baby Bay. Look how methodical this is. Wait for shield cooldown. Striker, backline, that's where he wants to be. Dogman on... Now, this is very well done by the shock, but yeah. Even then, like... So, and here's the annoying thing about it, right? Like, that was so methodical, so well played by the shock, and then they get into the official fight, and they just don't win it because of whatever reason, right? And now, all of a sudden, we're a minute and 15 out. They're using the Doofus to be aggressive in the backline on the support. And they have only Coalescence. Choi Hyobin has 22% ult charge because he didn't do anything. You don't have to have the Doofus go out there, risk getting picked off, switching to a Tracer, coming back. You can play just strictly around the Bastion here. The outside rotation. The problem with the outside rotation is you still have to walk in through a random choke. You're better off going up the stairs where you can like spread out and like take different angles than going through that one choke. Oh my god. Like the the May wall is like another level of disgusting. Instead of playing the bat at the Doomfist, they play the May so they can wall the rotations. Oh my god. Bro, anyone who says that they like Horizon Lunar Colony, watch this game. Just watch it. And tell me that you like this game again. This map. This composition, honestly, uh, it's not honest. It's a very dishonest come up. <laughs> Mitch saying it like it is. It's so rough. And you're stuck if you're the shock trying to dive in there to an immortality field into Blizzard. I mean, there's... there's I, I like Horizon Luna Colony because I play Bastion, so you're a part of the problem. Of play. So shock, they throw up a, a shield from the Sigma to try and get through. Then they get walled. The children you are... You are... You are the problem. I'm surprised he didn't flux. I guess... Oh, my God. Oh, God. But Choyobin's done... Troy Yeoman is at 40% ult charge three minutes into the game. The thing that nobody ever talked about. This is Troy Yeoman flux. Troy flux. Oh my god, somebody look at Striker. Gator's nasty. Yeah, yeah. He's, Gator was one of the best Sigmas when it first came out. It took them like a minute to rotate here. Troy's at 52% ult charge. Like I said, you think Dogman's the only one? You wrong. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't remember this game being this. I forgot about this. I forgot about the Bastion strats. Looks like this is it. They played around this bash up on the high ground with the Bastion, the May. You're only 30 seconds away from getting a full. You need to take a main so you can wall the Bastion yourself. Yeah, I mean you can do. Yeah, I mean you really kind of have to do that, or you have to have. Oh, they have a window. What do you do? Oh, look at the kinetic grasp shielding on Oh, shit. Why did... There is potential Why is Master on the floor? Oh. Oh, shit. I think Shock choked that. I think... Yo, the Bat versus Moira 1v1. Oh, the shock almost had it. Oh, Sinatra gets Masa. Dude, if they win, oh my god. The one thing I hate more than fucking Horizon Lunar Colony is Doomfist. <gasps> Baby V! Oh, the call! Oh my god, that, my, that fight was crazy though. That was a crazy series of events. Dude, Masa is fucking pumped. Masa and Dogman are pumped. That was a crazy fight. Alright, well, I want to watch that, that whole thing back again. That was crazy. So they window. Unless they're getting pulled off, like, really hurt them. Wait, what happened to... What happens to Masa? Oh, Sinatra comes behind him and punches him into the back line. But Masa lives with a, a sick lamp. Masa getting back onto that high ground and healing. And then he kills Smurf. And Sinatra. Like, Masa lives through that, gets onto the high ground, and kills two. If he just dies there, that's over. Masa clutched that like crazy. Dogman gonna rotate around on the point, try and keep Choi Hyoman up. Or down. 
Shields got thrown in and Dogman is missing now. Choi Hyobin. Yeah, honestly, this Masa clutch is crazy. Oh my god, look how big that immortality field is. That's way bigger than it is now, right? That seems enormous. Field thrown down and Choi Hyobin needs to be healed up a little bit more. And look how much health it has. And here come the reinforcements from the shock. Drop down, Smurf comes in with a pile driver Rasta on the point. Striker comes up with a tracer, but Gator shuts him down. Gravitic flux in that back corner, and Violet tentatively tries to put a foot on the point. Dude, Sinatra almost comes in and clutches this so hard. But then Baby Bay counter Doomfist clutches with the same stupid Doomfist stuff. That was a crazy fight. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that because we're going back to not interesting things for the next little bit. Because the shock is playing the exact same bash. Oh, never mind. Baby Bago Widow, dude. That was the what? That was like the twenty. That was the twenty. Wait, did did Baby Bay play in twenty twenty? I think it was the twenty eighteen shock. Was like just put Baby Bay on Widow, <laughs> and then they would just put all their resources into hoping Baby Bay would kill everyone. <laughs> I think I'm thinking of 2018 Baby Bay when he was on the shock. They like shock strategy was literally just put Baby Bay on Widow and then hope he kills everyone. And sometimes he did, but most of the time he didn't. Wow, Smurf goes low to that rocket punch. He's kept alive though. Not to say if you got the fortify before or after. They lost Moth and now they had to deal with the coalescence, so not a great formula for the shock. Violet actually uses his to get the coalescence out of him, at least in a trade. The rain have to be happy now with Sinatra off the table. First guy then retired me after one of the tournaments for Valorant. Yeah, yeah. He was one. He him. He was one of the people that like insta dipped out of uh. I watched to go to Valorant as soon as it came out. Masa is like the Damian Lillard of Al. <laughs> you mean just because he's been on the same team forever? But he just left. Like, what do you? What do you? What in what context? Yeah, and a goat. Without winning, yeah, yeah. Honestly, Atlanta is like a really interesting team because I don't think in any situation, in any time, have you ever thought Atlanta is the best team in the world? Or like even like super close. Like they've always been pretty good, but I don't think I've ever imagined them to be like, you know, top three in any matter, in any situation, top three. Like, obviously, maybe some bit in 2021, but they always have these like crazy pop off performances and then just become and like have the shit like they just ended up in the grand finals in 2021. Like, they I feel like they just play, they over exceed expectations consistently in like the most random fashion. Oh, Top three brawl team? Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they play brawl. Like, and, like, let's be honest. Like, Atlanta in this 2021 season, they were... Their, their major successes only really came in brawl, if I remember correctly, right? But it's just, like, it's funny. Because there are so many other teams, like... I'm trying to think of a team that has, like, the opposite effect. Kind of like Philly, right? Where it's, like, Atlanta is the opposite of Philly. Where Philly, where Philly chokes in the playoffs, Atlanta prosper in the playoffs, right? That, I swear that's every single time. Oh yeah, it's almost certainly better, Liz. Like, I would almost certainly be the team that pops off in the playoffs and the team that... Sh is theoretically better, but then chokes in the playoffs. Like, all I'll say is it's hard being a Philly fan, you know? I've never tried it, but because every person that I've met who's a Philly fan just tells me about the despair. So I've never tried it, but from what I've heard, it sucks. Philly fans have a bad time in every, in every situation they have a bad time. 
survive long enough for the damage dealers to come back. Hello. And in that instance, you know, your Doomfish, the Seismic Slams, comes down, takes out one or two, you're right back in the game. It's getting a breather mid-fight uh, for uh, a hero that is so in your face like Doomfish must be huge. Especially for the concentration. Imagine being a Toronto fan, but you've never expected Toronto to be good, though. That's the, that's the nice thing about being a Toronto fan, right? I think it's easier being a Toronto fan where you've never had hope compared to being like a Houston Outlaws or a Philly fan where you, they give you hope and then they just fucking drop the spaghetti and then slip on the spaghetti and then bang their head and then forget they were ever good to begin with, right? Like, at least Toronto, you're just content. If you win a couple of matches, you're like, oh yeah, pretty good, eh, hey, boo. It's not bad. I don't know why my Canadian accent is also somehow Kiwi, but... Everybody that's inside of it. It's, it's so devastating. It doesn't really look like that was insulting. I'm a Glads fan. Oh, okay, okay. Glads fans, okay. We've we've all stood around and we've felt sorry for you in the past, Glads. Sadiators, all that kind of stuff. You've won something. It's over. You're not allowed to wallow in self-pity. You can't put yourself in the same class as Philly and Houston. It's over. Okay? You guys are good now. You've had a good run. You've had success. Now you got to accept that you're no longer allowed to accept, uh, get sympathy wobble, wobble, like we wobble, get from wobble. these other people. Also, I just realized my, uh, my camera's been in the wrong spot for almost all of this. Sorry about that. Glad's won. When? They won, um, what was it called? Summer Showdown? Stage four of 2021 season? Countdown Cup? Yeah, whichever one the last one was. They already forgotten shoes Baptiste. Plus, you know, maybe that you'll be Sadiators this year, but I'm optimistic on Gladiators. I'm really excited to see the Gladiators play this year. Ooh, nice little final shot. I would have pressed Q about three seconds ago. And this is probably why Striker was in the finals and I'm not. Oh, yeah, that was a much better Q than I would have pressed. Striker's going to be able to get rid of Pokepo here. Not really much hiding behind the shield to be done. Just had a great combination of ultimates available there for the Who won that but choked the Atlanta game in playoffs? Atlanta was good in playoffs. In, in their defense, Atlanta, like, as much as you can be like, oh, they only played Brawl, they still beat everyone else. So they were good. They were good in the playoffs. Especially on Brawl. So now he'll be able to spawn with the rest of his team. How can they shit the bed? It's pretty easy for gladiators to shit the bed. If they just, if let's say Arns, if Arns and Paddy Pan, Paddy Pan both don't pay off, they're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> DPS it's, the category is stacked this year with a lot of teams. If Arns and Paddy Pan can't get there, they, um, I'll be worried about them. But they're, they're both been incredibly talented DPS players in the past. So, uh, you know, oh, nice punch. Um, but we'll, we'll see, like, right? Like, we have no idea. Lie to me and tell me Toronto to find are going to be good. They're going to be good. But then I saw the after that you said top third good. They're not going to be top third good. I, I, if Toronto is top third good, I will accept that I was wrong about a bunch of their players. Like, they, they actually have a really good roster now, which is funny, but the league is so stacked now. Oh, wow. I can't believe this oh, Smurf did die. The league is so stacked right now. If you were, if this is the roster they put forward, like, two seasons ago, I would say they're, like, easily top five. Um, you don't have to ask me about all the teams. I will be doing, um, I don't really know how I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do a tier list or if I'm going to do, I'm, but I'm going to do team, my own team previews, uh, going into the season. Oh, coming through the next couple of weeks. Oh, wow. I don't even know what's happening. That's a lot of flashing lights. And the shock loss. Okay. 
Striker can't quite get away, and we are now down into last fight territory. 16 seconds remain in the round of the shot. This man is such a weird contrast to goats. We see a lot of trade picks versus full team wipes like goats. Well, the thing about goats is it feels like if you take one piece out with goats, all of a sudden it all starts to like crumble, right? So getting one pick was so important. But I think in this one, there's so much damage potential out of so many characters that one pick doesn't really matter. It's more about like the ultimates and like the team wipe potential that you have. Yeah, like this was a very hard meta to watch. I think any meta with like Lucio Reaper is just a really hard meta to appreciate. I really don't like that meta in any situation. job with the Sigma up on the high ground. And I think he knows that, it too. You know, we, we talk about how great Sigma's ultimate is, you know, the shielding. He puts out a lot of to all right. time is right for the young blood of the league. Here we go, we're getting mirror. We're gonna watch this all the whole way through. That is a big shift of momentum. So far from Dallas, yeah, it'll be interesting. Live events are coming back in small capacity. Certain people are, you know, Houston's already announced they're doing their own uh, live events. We're hoping to get as many live events as we can for the future, but we don't know. <laughs> Thank you, pay me to throw. So you liked Moth Meta. <laughs> oh, that's a good pull by Smurf. It'd be hilarious if LA Valley do a live event. If they tried to do a live event in LA, I don't even know how many people would come. But they're not even in LA, so it would be in like Beijing, like the Beijing Bears event. It would probably pop off. If, if they did an LA Valley and watch party in, in China, it would do very well. They're like, Chinese esports is incredibly popular and successful. They like dwarf what happens in the West. Oh my God. I don't know who's winning this fight. Shock is slowly winning it, but also not. Oh, good flux. Oh, good beat by Moth. Oh God, what? Striker got punched on his. What is happening? That is just chaos. Is Shock winning? I don't know who's winning and who's losing yet. I think Shock's losing. Yeah, Shock's losing. What? Leave the room. <laughs> no, the room is salvation. What do you mean? The losers are the spectators. We're, we're the losers. At least, the, the, you know, the real losers are the people who are spectating it two years later. <laughs> Three years later, that's us. <laughs> What have we- I'm sorry I'm subjecting us to this. It's an important part of history. You need to remember this part of history. Custer forcing Chad to be maskers with him. Hey, will you, if I'm if I'm doing it, you're subject to watching it with me. Okay. Market fully. Days on day. Days on day still is to this day the only LA Valiant fan remaining. They even lost me. That's that's how tragic it is. I would have followed that team to the edge of the earth, but I guess that's not true. I think when they sold their team and became a fully Chinese team and just gave away everything that I supported and I I helped build, I guess that was <laughs> that was the nail in the coffin for me. I was a big fan of the 2020 Valiant team. Perhaps the Reaper was too far 
forward for Atlanta then. The Shock are able to stabilize now with a sound barrier in this fight and Massa out of the picture. The rain aren't going to be able to escape. Sinatra drops in behind them. Now that was... Because I remember watching on Valiant and the arena and your calls were so loud. Enough to hear over the clearing sometimes. Trust me, you don't want... If, if anyone who's ever heard me come and play Overwatch in a stadium, I'm so fucking loud. Like an unreasonably loud when I play video games and come in video games, especially when I'm on stage. Get a fight on the cart. The only person who I think has ever rivaled me on stage in terms of loudness of calls is um, Fusions. Fucking Fusions, man. That dude had a voice box. He was so loud. But then people told me I was exactly like that sort of thing. Jake talked as much as me in Fusions, but he 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 he, he did it in a respectable, quiet, mild-toned manner. Unlike me and Fusions, who were just screaming at the top of our lungs. Is that why you went 0 and 7? Yeah, we went 0 and 7 because they didn't have my my screaming tones in their ears at the every moment. How often did you wake up your parents when you were a kid? A lot. But I didn't compete much when I was uh, when I was in Australia. It was great though, hey, it's always a good time. No regrets, no regrets. Do you miss your time as a pro? I really enjoyed my time as a pro. I, I don't miss it. Like it was an awesome part of my life. I was a pro player for about five years, loved it. But at some point you got to move on and I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've fully moved on and I'm doing other stuff now and I love it. I guess going 0-7 was a regret, but you know, <laughs> shit happens. No one will ever match that. No one will ever be benched for being too smart again. Dude, look how fast that Sigma is deploying and undeploying shield. God damn it. I think Valiant is still owned by Immortals if they can't get a buy. Yeah, no one's trying to buy LA Valiant's spot. I, if someone decided to buy LA Valiant's league spot, I would have heavy worries over who is investing in. <laughs> this just ain't the time to buy an LA Valiant spot. Wait, was it, wait, was Sigma's flux not cancelable? Because I've seen people getting rocked. Does the flux still go off at this point? I don't remember that. Wow, because I could say, I saw they could keep hovering, but I just thought they were had an extra hover. Wow, that's crazy. Once it, oh, so once it was on the ground, it was over. Okay. Oh yeah. It's so hard to push into that point. Of oh, second point Gibraltar, especially when the defense has such a big advantage. All right, we're going to Li Zhang. Guys, I have an inkling. Just this idea that they're going to play Doom, Reaper, Lucio, Moira, double shield. Oh, God, I'm so smart. Look at me. I'm a genius. God, who would have thought? Rascal's in? They play Farah on Night Market, maybe? Is the only reason I can understand why they would put Rascal in. I think you wouldn't play Farah on this, but maybe they play Farah on Gardens or Night Market. It's the only reason I would say. May? No, I don't think they're going to play May. If they were going to play May, May, you'd play May on this map. You think any Overwatch troops can compete now? It's impossible to tell. There's a lot more that goes into R than just being like mechanically good enough. Like I think the most classic example that people bring up is like ML7. Like is ML7 good enough to be an L? It's it's really hard to tell. Like obviously he's mechanically good enough to play an L, but there's so many things that go around it. The answer is probably, but if you haven't even succeeded in contenders because they haven't played in contenders, they'll never be given that shot. You know, it's like, it's like the Kefri thing where Kefri was like, Mad that he people Overwatch League teams weren't giving him tryouts, but then he had never competed in contenders. It's like, why would anyone give you a chance if you've never even competed in contenders? But even want to? That's it. Like, there's no reason for ML7 to want to go, uh, go to Overwatch League. He does. He has a very successful stream. He has a great stream. He seems to enjoy it. Like. Oh, 
Red shell for Al. <laughs> I think I think we can firmly agree that the days of having one tricks in Al have come and gone in terms of like Yeah, we people used to make it work somewhat or like two to three trick think about it, especially DPS players, right? They're so flexible Like if you there are very few DPS players that can even just like only play hit scan, right? ML7 is great, but he says he's Zen and Brigney's not. Yeah, and that's like, and that's just realistic, right? Like ML7's a smart enough guy to realize when he, you know, when he needs like a lot of work. So he, like his Ana is obviously incredible, but you know, you need to be able to play it all as a flex support. And now Super is gone. Now it's really the end of one tricks. Exactly, you know. Super the Roadhog one trick is finally out of the league. Thank the Lord. Super also play Genji. Oh, sorry, two trick, two trick, two trick. One trick per roll. I just like blanked out. I, I don't know what happened in the last two team fights. I feel like I'm watching the same thing. What's his support one trick? Why do I always think Lucio? He used to play a lot of Lucio in like ranks like way back in the day. Oh, Sinatra gets Baby Bay going into this. Wow, that's a smart hold by Sinatra. Hog heals himself. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll go support. Goes Roadhog. Gets silver healing. So a lot of this in the first uh, control point. Teams that get up to 99. You win one fight. The other I mean, team battles their way back. Is Matt, you're looking at Ersty here. He is the yeah. player. It amazes me how Al is different from Ladder. There's a lot of ways in which you, like, a lot of people who are very successful and ranked, they tra it just doesn't transfer to Al because, like, you need to play with the team and you need to play coordinator, obviously, so... Oh, oh wow, that's just too much damage. That was a lot of cues from the Atlanta Rain. Alright, well, let's see if they're going to play Farah. Oh boy, this is played to this day, the symmetric comp TP to the point. Sim, wait, why, why is Rascal even playing? It has to only be for gardens, right? Like, are they even going to get to play gardens? This feels like such a weird sub from the shock. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good, that's a good uh, point by Matt. Like in this situation of like, why don't you play Symmetra, Cassidy, those kind of characters? It's just she just dies in a lot of situations. But obviously, this is a point in which is very, very good for Symmetra. What side is good for our stats? There's a lot of our stats on the just like the if you type in like our stats, they have like a really good website and program that Captain Planet created. Dude, uh, uh, Bebe's life just flashed before his eyes. Oh, 
rain looking good here and yeah, there's no real reason for them to play behind good point by matt how oh, it happens it happens rarely sometimes matt will accidentally say the right thing why is rascal in i could not tell you why rascal is playing like th this is one of those situations and the shock do this a lot more in 2020 and then it really catches them out in 2021 of like they just like specialize their players and they have like oh what the frick is gator gonna live oh my god he's alive i yeah shock win Supercharged from Poco, Master threw up an amplification matrix. Sinatra had to come in uh, with his own meteor strike, and Rascal used the Death Blossom. I think if you're at Atlanta in that point, you see them using everything, you kind of commit as well. And it's like, well, if we win this fight, we win this point, we win the map. Uh, so you're in a good spot. This will be a Symmetra Shield comes in from Beanie Banks, splits it right down the center what? of the point. This lets you advance without taking any post damage. This That's is an interesting. Sim turret spots, not ideal. Oh, he beaming. Dude, Baby Bay just did so much damage, but it's not enough. Oh my god, Baby Bay is just beaming. He is just doing so much damage. He always has another wall. Symmetra puts out so much damage when you see Baby Bay charge up there that there's not enough time to go up there, look, kill the immortality field, and then look back down because you're going to be dead. I do think Overwatch will get to a point where there, there'll be uh, many DPS and two DPS can't play everything at the highest level. Yeah, I agree. But I don't think we're even close to that point right now. I think in recent years, people have proven that, prove, uh, proven, proven that flexibility is king. You're better off having two very flexible DPS who work well together than having three DPS and they specialize in their own unique ways. Three one to the Atlanta Rain. Yeah, that that feels like a very questionable rascal sub right there. It had to have been only for the thing. Like, I don't think that map was Rascal's fault, but it seems weird to take him out and then not change anything, right? Final game, game seven. That's it. Draw here as well. We'll just keep going. That would have been the case. That, that would be. I watched Dev Team did a good job of avoiding this problem in the last two years. That's true. Maybe the developers are actually geniuses just helping out Overwatch League players. <laughs> Until the fact that they remove a tank and then fuck over. What is that like? half of their tank population but you know baby oh wow baby Bay just got rolled oh my god sinatra sinatra angry <laughs> you know what i just remembered do you remember when jane said that the reason that the overwatch went to 5v5 is that so the overwatch league teams don't have to pay for one more person's salary <laughs> oh god that was a good one i forgot about that it just it just it just came through my mind again he did not say that he did say that he said that the whole reason that Overwatch went 5v5 is just so that they didn't have to pay $50,000 for another tank. I don't buy it. He said that. You, you can't... There is tweets. I don't know if they've been deleted, but there is, that 100% happened. You just wait until Jane invents esports too. Oh no! The Atlanta Rain, so you're able to get that 50% damage on all those players stuck inside of it. Now though, I've forgotten Jane exists. That I was happy. I don't know what Jane's doing to himself anymore. I haven't heard that name in a while. Agent Spike, thank you for the prime sub, by the way. Atlanta to try and get a defensive stand here is they haven't had a one so far here. Supercharger, 
Oh, nice rock. Crypto trader? I could absolutely see Jane being a crypto trader. Oh, there you go. Can't wait until Jane becomes the inventor of esports. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, the inventor of crypto. Oh yeah, like as I said, I'm not discrediting anything Jane did. I think Jane had a really good, interesting thing where he like he was coaching for lower ranks and he did things and his content was good. That's why he was so successful, right? Like, but he definitely I feel like the, the reason he gets memed so much is that his his ego overtook him and in the fact that he thought he was he just thought he was much smarter and better than a lot of people and obviously that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Oh, nice play by Striker. He just had bad take after bad take and it just sort of was the death of him. The Qs are being pressed. Cole, Cole, Bongo, Flux. Troy needs to live. He does. Light show, baby. Shot kind of rolling right now. Yeah, exactly, ABG. As I said, I don't don't take this as me taking a crack at Jane. Like, I don't dislike the dude. I got nothing wrong with the dude. But as I said, he had some tragic takes. And that's... The sad reality is that th those takes are what he's remembered for by a lot of people. But the, there's still, like, a massive number of people who really liked his content. And he did make really good content for, as you said, digestible content for, you know, all ranks and, you know, coaching in the game. So he did great things. I think... I think Jane's biggest mistake was signing in as an Overwatch League coach. I think that might have been his biggest mistake. I think he had a really cool niche. I think he was doing a great job. And then he like... When he joined Dallas, I feel like it got really weird. Massive ult, yeah. Wasn't this the meta that Devast coined Flover Watch? Well, it is very Flover Watch, right? With like pools and the ultimates that you have. The, the Like when you should use your ults and how you should use your ults is very simple compared to some of these other situations. Troy is such a handsome, beautiful man. You know him. Alright. Same comps. Why so many commercials? Dude, that, remember, this is back when we had sponsors. <laughs> but, like, it was, like, too many sponsors, right? Like, think about how long these matches took. And they've definitely done a good job of cutting it down and, like, streamlining the process. Just Jeff, yeah. Remember the sponsors. <laughs> Oh god, Ursta somehow cracked that wide open. It looked like Atlanta Rain was like just about to lose it, but then get Coles first. A big part of this um, this matchup was all about who got Cole first, because the Cole Lessons is just such a dominant ult with how clustered everyone is. It just does so much damage and so much healing. Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Cheese it grooves. Wait, what was it? What was it? Cheese it grooves. It's a mind crunch or something like that. Troy was the best Sigma in Al. 
Choi was very good at this time. I don't think he had the best Sigma in all of our... Oh, what goes up must come down. Um, that, yeah, I, I, it depends on like the era in which you're talking. I think Choi was one of the best in, uh, in 2019. But then like, you know, like Hanbin and Krong had some crazy Sigmas in, uh, in 2020. Like 2020 was really when we saw most of it. Space has a really good Sigma. But yeah, like it depends on the thing. And it's also like, it's very hard to judge individual players in general on a specific hero. It's very hard to judge because it's always going to be amplified by the team that you're on, right? If you're on a really good team, you're going to look like a better player. I know, better in that role. Oh my God, that was such a gamble of, an e uh, of a Q. It, it was pretty solid though. Yeah, Piggy in 2021, like a new contender coming in to be like, yo, um, he was cracked. How can fights have so much chaos and action because it would be boring to watch? It's because there's no... It's hard to tell what is happening. That's the problem with this, these metas. And in general, it's kind of the problem with GOATs, but I think it was a little bit better in GOATs. The, the problem with this is it's hard to tell who's having impact and how where the impact is being had. And like who's winning the fight and who's losing the fight. Because it like, look, I don't know if Sinatra's killing people or not. Like he just punched and then uppercut and then eat a bunch of people and I don't... But I didn't see who's winning. Like, this fight's been going on for 20 minutes at this point. I still don't know who's winning this fight. Who's on defense again? Shock? Okay. Okay, yeah, Atlanta got the push. I forgot, I straight up forgot who was on attack and who was on defense for a bit. <laughs> well, I had to look at the clock. Oh my God, and it's still going. Massa's winning it. <laughs> it's all we need to know. Yeah, the, the, the most important kills, I think, were generally Moira, Reaper, and Doomfist. Those were, like, the most important kills. He should have held that for a little bit longer. Was this when Super was benched? Yeah. Oh, later, Reaper. Alright, now Shock again kind of rolled. Gator wasn't off tank. No, only for this part of the season. So this is when uh, Sigma was just released. And as with any new hero release, the best players at it is not generally the people in the role. It's generally the people who played it the most. And Gator apparently like hard grinded Sigma when Sigma first came out. Probably assuming it was going to be a main tank, like or testing its tank role. And he ended up becoming really good at it and getting full, uh, getting play time for the Atlanta Reign. Because he was a late signing. Chip the Ripper, thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. Yeah, Sigma was dumb on launch, right? You're not about like a, uh, let's say getting flying the air, if it was signed before Season 2? Yeah, but didn't... We were, we were reading something about it recently, wasn't it? I think one of the reasons is he didn't get... I thought he didn't get signed before Season 2. Or like he could only was only available because he was serving a suspension. We became a two-way agent season? Yeah, I can't remember exactly if that's true, but we read something about it recently with the Kaluge stuff. I think he was suspended with like a bunch of other players for it, but I don't 100% remember that, so don't don't fact check me on that. Oh, Moth just beat Baby Bay. Why was Super benched this time? Just bad? It's not. <laughs> if you get benched by Smurf, that doesn't make you a bad player. I just think they thought Smurf was better in this meta. Oh, was Hawk signed? I don't think Hawk got signed until 2020. Uh, Oh, no, the game, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're in the way of the TV. Alright, shock edited. 
think Atlanta got what they wanted out of that. Do you think it would have been played in goats? It's an interesting question. Like I can see a world in which Sigma gets played over Diva. Maybe? Because Flux would be very good in goats. It would be interesting. Gator was a member of Ghost before he signed to signed to Rain. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yikes! <laughs> that was a me flux. I think Atlanta's using too many alts here. It was sad as my heart to see the moth was always necessary for the shock, but for the glads he was mostly benched. And I think that goes back to the talking of like they played moth brig wasn't bad, just skewed brig was one of the best in the league, right? And it, Lucio was just never meta. Like I actually think every time that moth played for the gladiators, he was good. Like I think when he came in and played Lucio, he was really good for that team. It just didn't make sense for him to be played in where the the way that the team functions. So. What other DPS got played in this meta? It was like Bastion. I don't 100% remember how much adaptability there was in these playoffs. Dallas played a lot of Lucio, yeah, but that that's like that's like there's a there's a massive difference between teams to teams to teams, right? Like uh, Gladiators preferred to play like Shields and uh, Brig Re uh, Brig Zen or like Brig Bap. While Dallas liked to play a lot of rush because they didn't really have as good of shield players and hit scan players, right? A little bit far behind that old Bastion Sim, yes. Yeah, Bastion Sim gets played a bunch. Wants to come forward. Needs to be another big It's just it's just team to team, right? The anchor tank is down for the rain. Sinatra. Oh, we get seen another one of Baby Bay just as he came around the corner, and he didn't even mean to get gate of it. You don't intend to get somebody, they walk into your line of sight. It's like Hanzo, right? Yeah. Uh, shock get to the last stage of the map in overtime. I mean, Crazy how Doom never disengages. I think this people were saying that this is but he was getting 35 shields per ability hit. And I think he just gets a stupid amount of heals, Doomfist, because he's just guaranteed to hit all these things. He has survivability. survivability. And then once he gets his ult, he can just go as ham as he wants. Like look at that pull into uppercut, right? Like, it's just so hard to die. Oi, there you go. Yeah, really get a feel for the player, oh, Choi, calm down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I know you. I know you're winning, but let's just uh, let's slow uh, Let's calm down a little bit. You make it way tougher for that other team to make it all the way to the grand final. Choi too good on the off tank roll. <laughs> Not with that one flux he had, but hands are chilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Keep it active. Whoa. <laughs> that was weird. This is a zoning flux. Ah, smart. Knew that baby Bay had no cool sound. Just teleported to come in. He needed to use Wraith for him to get away. Yeah. As soon as he got through the hotel, he knew he was clear to just chase him around the corner. I mean, you are doing a lot of. Why does Moth keep beating prematurely? I'm not sure. Um, I it's it's hard to like really know exactly the reasons. Like I haven't been paying it too much attention to the the beat timings. We'll have a look at his next one. We'll see. Moth nervous. Yeah. <laughs> You just traded coalescence yep. for coalescence there. I mean, nothing but look at this. Should he open 88% of the group bidding flux? You've controlled the choke, yep. control the damage. Moss is closer to up. the sound barrier though, Matt. Mox still a little ways away. Sinatra stunned in midair. Gonna use his rocket punch to reposition, but it's off cooldown in a couple of seconds. Homeboy doesn't get nervous. <laughs> the rain have to get out. Homeboy never gets nervous. Now, old Sinatra would have chased that in, but, but this is a new refined I mean, this is not <laughs> <bad. laughs> 
<laughs> this Sinatra right here, baby. This one's changed. It's been upgraded. <laughs> no longer overextends. Five-year warranty. <laughs> Oh, he hit it. Oh, that was a big punch on the Violet. That was actually a fight winning uh, punch. Did I miss Moth Phase? No. Cuz I'm trying to contact you about your Doom's extended warranty. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I'm going through a tunnel. Moth waited too long. Oh, yeah, sorry. I said I was going to look at the beats. Yeah, the game is just so chaotic that it's like, I feel like I just don't notice those beats, right? I think Moth, I think... Oh my god, Vi Violet pulling the trigger on that coal was so dangerous. But very smart. Oh. It's a, it's a meta where beat is used for engage, not flux. I don't think it's really used for engage. I don't think there's been many beat engages. You really should be using it for the flux, but you also need to use it for... Like, there's so many different reasons you need to use the beat. And the reality is that you just need to use it before someone dies. If you think you can save someone's life with the beat, you're probably better off using it there. Oh. Alright, let's look at the beat, the Masa beat, uh, the moth beat here. Online. Supercharger down for Atlanta. Here comes the flux. Oh fuck. Ah, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, that wasn't good. Stunned unlucky. There has to be a rock from Gator, right? Or maybe you got... Well, the first one I pay attention to, he drops. Well, there you go. Punch? Oh, really? Instant cast beat right now, dude. It's still crazy to me we don't have instant cast beat. Pretty early beat from Masa. Almost too early, I think. Yeah, I think that beat was way too early by Masa. Like, I understand because they have the bongo, but yeah. Alright, here we go. Rialto! Let's hope nothing devastating happens. So Ursta Farah, Baby Bay Bastion. Oh, that's a good boot. Oh, Moff gets Gator though. Easy clap. Another one. Oh! Oh, baby. That was nice. Here we go, round two. Do it again. Another one. Bloop. Oh man. That is nasty. That was sick. Just does it again. Just run it back. Oh shit. Smurf down. That was a really bad fight for Shock to lose. Shock should not have lost this fight. Like, look at the... Like, obviously, we don't get to see it because of the replay, but, like, how does Shock lose this fight? 
Like, all Shock have to do is wait for their call, and they just win and get this first point for free. But instead, they, like, somehow lose to zero ults Atlanta Reign. It's pretty big, though, for Atlanta to get that next fight win. The, the people in here going crazy, you know, the big boof. I think Smurf probably still had his, uh... I think he might have greeted his, um... Fortify. Oh, good beat. Do they get another fight? I don't know if Atlanta gets another fight here. They, if they do, this is good for them. Because of the changes on defense here for Atlanta, some of their players are going to be behind in terms of ultimate. You will probably get another touch here, though. Do we really need the supercharger? Absolutely. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like the Shock are losing way too many fights that they really need to win. Oh yeah, this is just a lot right now. They come through with a big fight. That one, you're able to hold on to your Gravitic Flux. Urster picks up two kills now. Yeah, you, you like it's easy to say that they didn't need the supercharger, but yeah, it, it's definitely very hard to tell in these fights because you don't want to not use it and then be the thing that would have turned the fight, right? Oh yeah, you've lost privileges to the room as well. Come on, out you go. Go on. Oh, okay, now Bo's in. That's just great. Now Bo's inside. Waiting for the shock to present themselves. All nice and clumped up for him to send them skyward. Everybody clucks for the shock first. Oh! oh big oh, punch. Cancelled it. Got him with the accretion. Oh, it couldn't have got any worse for him. Ursa drops down. I mean, he can only really get that one kill. Death Blossom from Strong. What just happened? They punched each other? Five with the shock. That, that's not supposed to happen, right? Okay, now Bo's inside. Okay, this is great. I, I'm holding you personally accountable for this. Yeah, like, that should have counter pinned. Oh! So not just kind of popping off right now. Atlanta looks so boom, but they're doing a pretty good job of staying alive. Yeah, a couple of things devil Oh, that's a good flux. Oh, Dogman shouldn't have called unless. Oh wow. Are they actually gonna live through that? That's crazy. Now, like, how does everyone live through that flux? That's crazy. That should have been over. Dogman Savior, yeah, he is, he's smarter than I am. That was a great call. I, that looked like such a throw call. I guess everyone was so stacked up that he just got so much healing out. DPS need to find something? Yeah, they, one of the DPS need to have a big follow through. Oh, that wasn't a very good flux. Oh! Yeah, they didn't have the support ults to, to clear that. Alright, here we go. It doesn't seem like from the player camps on the stage though that Atlanta's flustered. It seems like everybody's remaining calm in the comments. You know, trying to trying to get battle back through this is 
it seems like these final fights for both of these points go in favor of the shock. It's really backbreaking for Atlanta. Now coalescence to start it off. Sinatra really didn't get started in that fight match. Yeah, Sinatra ended up in no man's land. The perfect example of the latter. Did he get so much value? Yeah, Sinatra's uh, Doomfist was crazy in this, uh, in stage four. Like, I think a lot of people were worried that he, like, Shock were going to get heavily nerfed by Goats when it came through. Like, are they going to be as good in, like, the 2-2-2 two, two, two compositions? The answer is yes. They were, they could be just as good. They went, they went crazy in the lower bracket. Like, not dropping a single map throughout the lower bracket is just unheard of. Oh yeah, what did we just learn? Oh, choice dead. Sparkle actually did play in this meta. Yeah, this meta went through all of contenders and that kind of stuff. It was like a pretty popular meta. Direct. It was like uh, after two two two, this meta gained traction pretty fast. No support ultimates to deal with it. Gator also going to get close to the gravitic flux, but no support ultimates for the shock. So. 28 seconds left, the shot needed to invest into that In general, like, contenders follow a lot of what Overwatch League does, and then, like, every now and then an Overwatch League team steals the contenders, but then, like, Overwatch League teams, like, popularize it, right? And Goats is a prime example of that. Oh, no. Oh, that's a good flux. Yeah, Cole just came too late. That'll do it. Sparkle was insane, as you might expect. Yeah, I think we can all expect that. But for Atlanta, you know, like you mentioned, you know exactly where you need to get the cart to win this map. The shock, you're like, oh, well, it's 33 spheres. And I'm wondering, you know, it looked pretty calm, which is good. It's it's funny, like, when you're in the game, like, you actually stay pretty calm, regardless of, like, the expectations and stuff like that. I felt, for me, I found the hardest part is, like, the first map and just, like, getting comfortable in the game. And that's why I really don't like people getting subbed in here and there. Because, like, once you've, like, once you get a couple of, like, minutes on the stage and thing, you just get into the flow of it and you're just going through, you're just going through the motions again. But I feel like the first map and, like, or being subbed in in the final hours and that kind of stuff is just one of the worst things you can do to a player. Pirate ship? Oh, baby. Let's go. They're playing a Bastion attack? What the? Where's Shock? They're holding the cart? I guess that's smart. Oh yeah, this was shocked. Just were not ready for that. Why are they always in a room? <laughs> okay, Liz, as as interim coach, no more rooms. No one's allowed in the rooms. <laughs> stay out of rooms at all. We're gonna stay in the open at all times. Yeah, and the thing is, like those room plays can be very oppressive and very annoying. But against the bash, it just doesn't work because you eventually lose out, right? Oh, wow. Great pull by Pogbo. Is Moth dead? Yeah, Moth's dead to that as well. Oh, this is a rough first point. What match was the Toilet Bowl? Like, the official Toilet Bowl that if you say Toilet Bowl, everyone would assume you're saying this one is Boston versus Houston Outlaws in Stage 1 of 2020. Oh, my God. It almost got two other people as well. Damn, that was a great pull by Pogbo. The room in Dorado, dude, that room in Dorado was so toxic. The one that you do with the May on first point. Yeah, so it pull is super OP in this meta. It uh, it has like a really large radius in which it pulls. Smurf going a ball and Sinatra going a tracer is a very interesting. It's interesting that they've. Force the shock to switch comp. Oh wow. Oh my god, this is so clutch by Striker. Marcel 
come back on the Lucio. He's probably going to go back. The though. Jerry. Yeah, that, that's literally the rise of Jerry. On the high ground. What's Jerry doing these days, actually? Is, did he go back to contenders or did he, like, retire? Oh, wow. He almost punched that. Viola is very close. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh my god. Shock again rolled. Wow. They are rolling. Jerry's in a training arc? Oh, okay. He's going to come out and just be super jacked. Like next year, he's going to get signed and he's going to look like Sabiolbi. And he's just going to be enormous. And he's, it's going to be the end of his training arc and he's going to come in and win MVP in 2023 in Overwatch 2. You heard it here first. Oh. It's a lot of shock holds though, so you take that fight. He'll be taller than Lip. Yeah, he's going to grow about seven inches. Actually, I think he needs to grow more than that to be taller than Lip. He's going to grow a foot, okay? San Francisco. Down the Lip looks like a giant among men. In the Reaper Doom Fist here. As we move in towards the final parts of this map. Sound barrier available for Massacre. You know they How tall is Lip? I think it's Lip's like I, I just from looking at him, I want to say like 6-4. Or something like that, right? Oh, Elsa just got evaporated so you do lose here he's 6-3 okay there you go the small, the small benefit of it though is that they use the coalescence and you didn't use anything you were probably going to sell okay atlanta's just just accruing ultimates they're fine you don't have the opportunity to use it. eight foot now seven look at this for atlanta you're gonna have five ultimates here you have the you have both support ultimates you're gonna have the gravitic flux you're gonna have the supercharger like you're in a great spot like imagine if they didn't have the sound barrier here all right atlanta here we go they got five ultimates just press the q button lots of q's as seagull would say defensive death blossom is interesting oh god good luck oh good luck Old dump, yeah, that might have been too many ults to not get to the end. Yeah, this is actually a problem for Atlanta. I think they just committed everything as like that was going to end the game and it just straight up did not. I don't know if that beat was necessary by Moth. And I think Shock's over ulting here now. So now Atlanta's going to get another run at an ult cycle before Shock get an ult cycle, maybe? to be blown just to keep the shock in this match i mean uh, yeah we're talking about you know like you see how close the distance is to other screens like you're talking about a minimal amount of distance to get this for atlanta what's gonna happen i don't know anything could happen at this point i'm sure it ends super ethically don't worry is credited with being a very good ult hey, no, stop. Let's see if he's been able to follow these fights so far and know that the shock have nothing to work with ultimate wise. It's all old fashioned kills here. Left to right click, baby. Master playing safe here, boot away. Violet almost has Cole. Really Smurf goes down. Oh my god, everyone's so low. It's so chaotic. Dude, this fight is crazy. And shock hold. Dude, shock are like just holding on by the skin of their teeth. Smurf keeps switches, keeps switching to wrecking ball. <laughs> Smurf, just stay, Arissa. San Francisco 
on the precipice man. The, the shock, the, the, the only thing that could get the shock in trouble here is Coco gets the supercharger, you may have to use the sound barrier, and then you don't have it for the gravitic flux. Oh, they're all so low. Mott's got the beat though. That supercharger is so big. Oh no. C9. Possibly the greatest team in the league this year has just committed a cardinal sin. Oh my god. They walk off the card in the Atlanta Rain pull up one of the most exciting attacking pushes we have seen. And yeah, they look calm right now, but I guarantee Dude, everyone is so shell shocked. No one knows what to do. Was good from Atlanta, but the, the C9 was, was brutal. I Shock probably had that. And they had the advantage in that fight. You know, they lose Smurf at the beginning. Violet was about to get coalescence in the Oh fight. my god. Why you make me watch? Dude, it's so crazy. Oh, Moth sad. This is wild. I mean, take a look from the overhead. So the gravitic flux comes down. Sound barrier and Alt comes in. Oh, he's in the air. Shocker so like Shocker gonna win. Atlanta has two people alive when that goes down. Obviously it cuts, but they only have two people alive when they won that round. Shock have five. Like it it that fight was over. Yeah, it was smoke getting taken down. He was Look at how many of them like get to the point as soon as it like there's so many people who just make it on as well. This be the closest, and, and there's four players in the back trying to deal with Urster, and they just. Uh, it's one of the best C9s. It's one of the most impactful C9s. It's not the worst C9s that we've ever seen, but it's one of the, it's one of the most impactful C9s. It was crazy. We need to collect ourselves up here a little bit now. Wait, show the moth face. For the players, we're gonna head down to the floor and hear from. Show me moth. What's the? Thanks, Mitch and Matt. I'm here with Baby Bay. All right, Baby Bay, I love you, but I don't want to hear what you have to say. I want to see Moth's face. I want to see the face. Show me the face. Where is it? You got to find the tweet. Is that the only way to find it? Does anyone have the tweet? I thought it was in the VOD. It was right after the game ended, before the first interview, before the Baby Bay interview. I don't think it was. Further back? We just watched it. Why? Nobody was there. We are. We need to collect ourselves up here a little bit now. And before for the players are gonna head down to the floor and hear from we we already watched it live we've already watched all of this i'm here with baby bay what a tremendous game for the atlanta rain blizzard arena can we get some love for the atlanta rain congrats baby bay well deserved and i know leading up to this match oh my god sad moth face sad moth overwatch lost face gif Sad Moth Overwatch Lost Face GIF. Perfect. Here it is. There it is. Just for your pleasure, chat. Hello? You gotta watch it in, in, in this school square. This small square. There it is. Enhance. It <laughs> doesn't work like that. Ugh. I feel bad for him. It's just, it's the encapsulation of everyone's heart and everyone's feeling every time they ever see Nine. I feel bad for Moth, but it's like the perfect emotion, you know? It's the perfect reaction to what just happened.
<laughs> Soup left his body. Oh, you feel bad for him. That, that was the moment that Moth decided to retire. It has side trick. They were going to win that fight. Look at Moth's oh. legs. Oh. Here we go. It the was in the C9, replays. They were going to win that fight. Look at Moth's uh, face. Oh, oh no. no. It that hurts my soul kind of re-watching it. Oh, that God. With you. That gut feeling that you find it so difficult to get over. That was yesterday. They if it makes you feel better, Moth, wobble, 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 Shock wobble. fans, anything like that. After that, they didn't lose a single map for the rest of the season. They will actually crush through the playoffs, dominate absolutely everybody. And absolutely dominated. The San Francisco Shock showing that. But that was a... It was a banger of a match. But I think it's important. You know, history of Overwatch, I think we look at a lot of things through these, like, rose-colored glasses and we forget some of the turmoil we went through. This meta was definitely not interesting. All right, what are we playing? Bastion defenses on Horizon Lunar Colony. Just Reaper Doom everywhere. It was, it was awful. There's a lot more Bastion that comes in. I'm not sure... After watching this, I'm trying to remember if I do want to watch the MYXL Vancouver Titans match. I'm going to go give it a quick gander at some point and decide if we want to watch it. If it's going to be this more of the same, we might not watch it and we might just move on to the next season because the actual Overwatch League season 2022 is what, coming what, hard and what, fast what, and I want to finish this series before the season starts. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye out and I'll, I'll let you guys know. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys found it interesting. Make sure to hit the notification bell. Like the video if you've been enjoying the series. So many people have been coming in, giving me love about the content. So I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys next time.